Do you know what I mean? I've not gotten away with one, but he kind of thought, why, why am I in this position? And he's obviously taken advantage of it. Well, he's got a tough match up here, though, with Callum Singleton, a player that's he's probably been on a little bit of a downer in, in terms of ultimate pool terms. He hit the ground running when he turned professional, making it through to a final yeah, very final early on. Against Chris, wasn't it? Against Chris Melling, yeah. Even in the Challenger series, it just looked like the, the transition mm. into the pros was going to be uh, sort of a walk in the park for him. It looked like he was going to just slide in and that he, he would be sort of at home straight away. But yeah, he's, I don't know. I don't know if he's he's sort of maybe not been playing as much or whatever, but it, it's, it's noticeable that he hasn't had the results that he sort of had right at the start. Yeah, and one of the results he did have right at the start was a, a really good victory against Tom Cousins when right when Tom was in the middle of winning titles in a bunch early last year as well. And, you know, it was Callum Singleton that kind of stopped him in his tracks. And that's what he has to try and do again here. Yeah, I think the start of this match is really key for Callum. He just looks like he's um, one of these sort of momentum slash um, confidence players. Um, Similar to somebody like Josh Kane or something, what is it like a very good front runner? Like he's 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 very consistent overall as well. But I feel like if he starts well, he just gets a bit of a a head of steam. Maybe like a Christy Caulfield as well, similar sort of thing. Like yeah. a hard a hard person to peg back. Well, it is Callum with the opportunity to start quickly here. Race to seven, 50 minutes in the Pro Series. Yeah, the the. Sort of layout doesn't really offer itself sort of easily here, um, unless he he might be tempted to try and get the top two out of the way, but I just don't feel like the it, to get into the yeah he's thinking about it. Maybe leaving one of them up the table. Yeah, I feel like if he left them two, it would have been a tricky shot to get up good on them two to then get onto the eight ball as well. So we'll see how he goes about it here. Slightly strange one, is he playing, a, playing the plant here? That which would be strange. And I feel like he's overrun it a little bit. I feel like he wants to go across to the sort of left cushion up where Tom sat um, and land on the top cushion. He's just a bit thin on this. He wants to be leaving the angle to be coming out to the middle of the table for the black rather than. He can still hold it, but he was a bit thinner than he. Yeah, just like this. Mm, mm, he's checked that snooker much. himself. The way he played that one is almost though, is he trying to get the underside of the yellows, or did he just get the line completely wrong? Cause yeah, he did. He tried to he tried to go by the yellows and leave the cue ball so it would be coming across the table rather than sort of coming down the table. It's probably a harder one to, to judge. And he should get the red, but he's not likely to get good on the eight ball here. That's yeah, as good as he could have hoped. He's, he's got his hand on the table at least. Feels a big shot early in this match. I thought he might be playing the double there, I don't know why, he just, the way he was lining up, he didn't really give it a lot of time, did he? Air of frustration, the way he played that eight ball. Yeah. Yeah, it was like he decided early, didn't really sort of give himself time to... We hear a lot of players talking about how, how much these pockets can play generous, brand new conditions out there and the way the balls are. And I thought he'd just try and float that in dead weight and, yeah. and let, give it every chance to take it. Yeah, I was watching... Um, Morgan McInnes against um, Luke Gilbert earlier on, he had a similar shot and Morgan just backed himself and, he, and to be honest with you, at any table it would have went in, but he's maybe got that in the back of his head, sort of thinking yeah, if I, if I play this nice enough and it's generous it'll go in, but he's just backed himself and played it really good, it's, like, it's as if, um, yeah, Callum was just a bit frustrated there. Like we say, the, these opening moments are big for anyone playing against Tom because it doesn't really affect Tom as much. I don't think it gives him any more sort of positivity. It just sort of gives you an extra challenge as well. Going not numerically one behind but unknown that you've let him away with one as well. Not sure if the right hand one of the two goes. If not he's going to be moving a yellow when he plays this one. Not guaranteed to get good position. Yeah, I feel like he might have to just. Um, it does look like it goes. I just, I feel like he's maybe just going to have to judge this cannon and just leave himself on the underside of the yellow to come back down. I did actually. I oh, was playing that one. I did feel like he would have got rid of the two yellows at the bottom when he was down there. Yeah, 
Yeah, just leaving himself plenty on goal in either of the two balls. Again, I'd probably be inclined to play the bottom one here. I think he's trying to decide. I think I feel like if he play, it's natural if he plays his bottom one. So he does punish that early mistake from Callum. That the sort of the standard, the the sort of mean average standard, um, is so immense. I feel like it's probably less than it used to be. And um, one of the weekends, I think my first, my first run draw in both events. One was Chris Mellon, one was Declan Brennan. So do you know, I, I know I need to play my best stuff as I do against most players. But yeah, it does play, it does play a part in your head. You sort of think, well, do you know what I mean? And you put yourself under a bit of pressure inevitably, but. Yeah, I feel like, like I say, if you just play the frames as they come, um, like I say, it's easier said than done, but I feel like you're just giving yourself the best chance. I don't think I've actually played Tom on the ultimate yet at all. Quite friendly with Tom, so I don't know if it would maybe affect him slightly as well. Do you know, if you're playing a friend, it's maybe not as cutthroat as a killer instinct isn't exactly the same. Oh, that's, oh, you could never have foreseen that happening, in my word. Wow. And the yellows came out unbelievably too. It's just uh, it was a hard one to judge. How has that happened? Yeah, that's what it's Tom's thinking right now. You wouldn't believe it when you look at that. No, it's just I know, and it just it didn't look anywhere apart from in the pocket as well. And again, oh. the yellows were absolutely perfect. Yeah, these should go, and these need to go. Well, that's not the best that's of shots not from the Callum. Best shot, yeah. This this pot alone has to go in in Callum's head because he's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like he doesn't need to do anything with the cue ball, he just needs to make sure he pots it, but he'll be thinking in his head, what have I done now? <laughs> and I think the eight ball goes bottom right so he can just leave the one over the left centre till last. Um, and just track down towards it. Get the cue ball back to where it is now roughly. Should be all good. I thought he put that a little bit thin there, but maybe that was to make sure that he came out far enough for this one. Yeah, he's landed nicely enough, just dropping it. He could go further down the table. Doesn't really need to do anything more than drop it in, though. Yeah, so that'll settle him a little bit. Yeah, especially after having that chance in the opening frame and letting it go. Get, immediately gets a chance in frame two, which he takes. Also five other games in action. Yeah, I feel like they didn't exactly pop when he hit them. Which is strange because his first break was immense. Yeah, shake of the head. A dry break. Yeah, the only silver lining is it doesn't look like an easy layout for Tom. Yeah, he was just kind of forced into at least getting on the better colour set there and then he could sort of analyse it and see what he wants to do. He's got one obvious bad ball at the top of the table. The left hand side, that's going to take some getting on. Yeah, I feel like the two issues with that bad ball are unless he can land through the gap at some point. From the overhead it looks like he probably can, if he was sort of where the eight ball is. Yeah, but from the main camera that doesn't look close, it doesn't does it? Look, no, it doesn't at all. Um, what I was going to say was it's, it's, there's not only not an easy ball to play the cannon off of if you want to move it, but 
it's hard for you to really get the ball completely out of there because the yellows are guarding it a little. I wonder, is he looking at... Attacking it now, yeah. yeah. Floating by the eight ball and hopefully... I feel like the, t the two yellows that are closest to the left centre, I feel if you hit the right-hand side and one of them just glanced it, you can almost hold hold the cue ball in that sort of area. But he might just go with a bit of pace into it. Well, he's looking at leaving this red over the middle, so it's a good ball to then... No, he's not. No. Well, he's just congesting it even more. Yeah, just saying... It's yeah, not it's really on, why chase it? Often a good play, sometimes when you've got that one really bad ball, he kept potting there and didn't get on it and then missed or had to give it out, hand the table over, it would have been worse for him, he's turned it over early enough. I feel like he was almost happy enough to pot the first red beyond the better colour set and just turn it over then, but yeah. he probably felt like there was a glimmer of possibly getting into that area, but yeah, he's just going to try and congest this a little bit more. It's not too bad. May have left the red to top right, but Tom wasn't tempted before. He won't be tempted now. We could be in for a bit of a frame here. Yeah. Not always known for his tactical play, Tom, because he's got such a big power game, but very good pull brain. Yeah, he does actually have a very good pull brain. Again, he's not sort of lost anything by missing that ball. He probably just felt by default he should pot it and get himself in a better position. You can see he's just balancing on two fingers there. It's not ideal. It's interesting that he was taking it on, though. Yeah, I can't really think what the next move would have been because yeah. sort of in this rule set, you don't really want to, like the ball that's at the top of the table, he doesn't really want to put that over the top left. He maybe would have maybe put it into a position where he could have sort of played a, a cannon at some point. I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to have us guess in this whole frame, really, because no one really wants to be attacking. They're kind of just dangling a carrot and letting someone else maybe take the initiative. I just get the sense that Tom's got something in his mind of, of the way to deal with his problem ball. Because the red he did put into that area still goes left centre, so it's he still only has the one problem ball. Yeah. But I'm not sure what that Yeah, barring that, um, maybe obviously just running running out of time a little bit there, it does feel like he he had something in his brain. Even then, I don't think that was by design. All of a sudden, Hawks just came back on the table, but... I think he was half thinking about the double plant. That yeah. makes sense to play the loss of turn. I think he was just making sure... That, I think the, the object there was to try and leave the cue ball where Callum's not really... He's, he's either having to nudge one of the safer... Like, something in the safe area, or p sort of clear this red at the bottom here, so Tom can maybe have a... Another route to a cannon, but he might just congest this a bit more. I feel like that's the right shot from Colin. Yeah, trying to outpatient each other at the moment. Yeah. Like, he can just sort of nudge away on this area until Tom feels like there's some sort of cannon on. And he's he's almost just got to hope that it doesn't come out. Not sure if you can put the loss of turn here or just nudge the yellow away from the pocket. Just put the loss of turn. I feel like the advantage in that now is that he now has he can maybe use something as a breaker ball but still have a ball over the pocket to go back to if the if the cannon comes out poorly. But like I say, it's just Callum's doing the right thing here, he's just congesting it so th there's no way if he can is that red it can really come out. Tom's almost happy, yeah, he's almost happy to just get the reds in a good position and he's one cannon away from guaranteeing that he's on our ball because the other ones are over the pocket. Yeah, fascinating little battle. No, oh, that's quite good. It's a really good position for Callum really because he, so I mean, he no, he's not even tempted, he, he can't be tempted by anything because he's not having an out on at all, so he's happy to just let something unfold really. Like it only oh, that's a, a poor one. Well, is Callum tempted to try and fly into the problem area? I feel like he's... <laughs> that face tells us it all, doesn't it? I feel like, again, there's not a, a great ball to... Like, there's no good angle to, to fly into the... 
I quite like trying to find a loss of turn, get a red off the table, whether it's the one on bottom right or top right. Yeah, I feel like what Colm was looking at there is, is getting the... Yeah, you're right here, I think you're right. I think what he was going to play was... It's not too bad, he could have done with the yellow stain over the pocket. I feel like what he was going to do was the outside yellow of the three um, sort of nudge it out a little so that he it's then in a position where he can leave an angle and go into the two hard ones. But must have been a bit delicate. Well, Tom just returns the yeah, favour. I feel like I, I, I thought he was actually going to play that the previous visit before he was snookered. But yeah, for, for how much you watch Tom reel off frames, this is pretty interesting to watch. Yeah, similar to what I thought before, he's just getting our ball into a position where he could fire into them. Tom's probably just going to dump him behind this red down here and try and snicker him. Sort of trickle the red over the pocket and let the white drift up to the red. Don't think he's going to gain any anything from it, but what else can he do? Yeah. Oh, he is actually. Is he about to attack this? No, actually, he's queuing up. Yeah, he is. He's had enough. Yeah. And Cal exactly what I said earlier on. Calm's happy. Like not yeah. not just because worst case scenario he is one frame behind with a huge chunk of the match up away, but also because he's got every chance of sneaking that one and then having less work to do because there's less time left. So. In Callum's situation, though, you're happy to see Tom. That's what you yeah. want is Tom to take on a low percentage shot, which he's done. And, you know, Callum's going to get the reward from it unless the, but, uh, so Tom can pull out a miracle. So I'll also turn and hide the cue ball, is it? It's a good effort. Mm, he's not well enough on it, is he? Mm, yeah, maybe. That's a nice shot from where he was. It's crazy the dynamics in this room. It's just flip plopping every two, every two visits. It's been a very good shot there. Just try to cover that red, is he? A little. Tom trying to be aggressive again, trying to look what his options are. I think if he sort of had the the cue ball sort of to the left of where the black is, I think he would be able to play the red off the cushion off the back of the yellow. I don't know if that's what he just looked at, or if he can dig into it and can I play the cannon here. I think he feels it can play that. That's a really good back here, and if he's got mm. it, won't come out again. This is a ball that will not come out for him. Yeah. Had to play that quite slow to allow the spin to grip yeah, to get there. Definitely. And I still didn't think he could actually get, no. get enough into it, and he's he's did well to get into it. But like you say, the pace has just meant that he can't. The balls that were guarding that red. Yeah, anyone that's wondering, if you play that with more pace, the spin doesn't take, and look, it doesn't take to a little bit later on, so you can't get that line. Yeah, with the thrown quite as wide. A little bit more mileage in this room now. I feel like if the the yellow that's by the red goes to the left centre, or is available to the left centre, he can sort of have a free go at this here and almost dangle a carrot at Tom if he does miss. And he, do you know what I mean? He, can, he, would, he would only have a rash sort of pot cannon. Yeah, rolls this yellow down there. I don't think, I feel it's like just not got anything else on, really. Yeah, the safety would be just as, you know, difficult, really, in terms of, or just as risk, like the risk of what he's going to yeah, leave. Exactly, it's still going to yeah. be there, so you might as well take it on. Looks like he's not doing it. Looks like he's just chipping the, the cue ball on top of the yellow and red. Yeah. Yeah, continu continuing to show great pra uh, patience. Easy for I couldn't to actually say. believe there that um, Callum still had his extension. They've had that many visits each. And so much to think about. I can't believe he's he's only just used an extension. There's Sean Chipperfield in the background having a good watch. He's wondering what's going on here as well. Yeah, I'd rather watch this game than his own. I feel like this could be where Callum gets the advantage here. He could sort of trickle the, the cue ball in behind the, the yellow over the top left. Now he's running about. He's running about now. He's got 20 seconds to worry him. I feel like he'd lost his bearings there a little bit. Oh, we just don't be too greedy here. 
If you're trying to hide the cable. Last thing you want to do is run off. Yeah, that's what he's done. Oh, dangle the cart again. Yeah, you can see the red at the bottom of the table. Because you can see the red he's nearest to. I feel like on this match table, with how wide it throws, this is a, a lot harder shot for Tom if he was to play the bottom one. I feel like it would slide a little. He wouldn't be. It's not the same angle up towards the cluster. So I feel like he probably doesn't even feel like it's on. I don't think it's on. No. I think he's, he's can't get there. If he could, he'd be downplaying it already. Gonna try and hide the cue ball twice across and behind this red. Is that the shot? It's not too bad if it pounces. The red's a little less guarded now, so Carl must uh, mind his work. Might just put this back towards it. This is absolutely not a frame. I thought I'd be commentating on the no. Tom Cousins match. We've had 20 minutes in this match. There's two, two frames completed in the first 20 minutes, which is quite incredible. Yeah, it's just like I said. Do you know what? If you can you get through to this top left, or if yeah. he hasn't, that's a good shot. But the yellow, it may just pass the other yellow, but it's tight. I don't think he can see the one nearest the pocket. And all in all, it's a pretty good shot from, from yeah, Tom. Yeah, because he, that's by design. He didn't want to leave it any more to the left and leave. There's this little drop in the middle. Let's hide the cue ball again. Yeah, this is, this is pretty disciplined from Callum here. Yeah. He left the pot though this time. Oh, this will be tight. Thank you. Oh, he seems sort enough. Body language says he's okay. Yeah, because that would have been a sore one. His margin for error is not huge on that shot. So no, he's, he's leaves, done well. he would leave one of them, yeah. Oh, Tom's getting down on this. Can is he cutting it in another pocket? Possibly. I feel like he has, yeah, he's sort of queuing up that way. That's close. Not a shot. Oh, what a oh, shot that is. Himself, wow, oh, he deserved more. <laughs> he deserved <laughs> more. That's some pot. This is a disgusting frame. <laughs> it's like, Gannam can't get the chance to win it, and Tom just cannot Even the pace of that shot, way. Is, it was nowhere but back of the pocket. It's just the only place he could really snick on himself in that vicinity is there. Outrageous pot, though. Carl will smug me, sp smugly be thinking that yeah, he's fell right in my trap there. <laughs> he won't, say, won't be thinking anything until... Oh, <laughs> he, got the, he got the cue ball in the black zone. Yeah, he just, you just get nervous in that situation as a player. Once they made the first one, you're thinking, oh, no. We see so many high, highlight reel stuff. And right, if, there's yeah. another, if there's another safety in this frame, then I give up. Yeah. I will, I'll, st I'll stop guessing. Well, the... This frame has lasted a long time, and that's the yeah. first aggressive shot Callum's played in the whole frame. Yeah, all jokes aside, though, he's done, he's done really well, because, yeah. like I say, that I think that he would have been happy either way for a huge chunk of the match to have been gone and be 2-1, because he doesn't mind if he's only one frame behind Tom or one frame ahead of Tom or whatever he is, but it's the the chance of falling far behind. But he, he, he sort of played that in his favour, that he would only ever really be... Half the match clock would be away, and he would be one up or one down, really. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really good point. I think shortening the match up does, mm -hmm. you know, not yeah, plays Callum, in, yeah, yeah. It plays into Callum's hands. Not that yeah. not that Callum's done it by design, but it's just the way the balls have come out, and he's played the frame. You know, every visit's been, you know, to the situation of the frame, but it's it's to his benefit. Yeah, like it almost looked like the aggressor or the one who sort of forced it at all. There was Tom because he probably. Tom was successful with his first break, but we got second time up. Normally, huge weapon of a break. Yeah, they don't move as so explode like they usually do. Do you know that initial pop wasn't really there? Yeah, he normally gets um, a little bit of height on his yeah. break as well. Yeah, and it's really hard to tell with Tom because he didn't give much away at all, but he sort of looks a bit like, I don't know, a bit lethargic or I know that's kind of general look but he kind of looks a bit depleted even there it, it feels like there wasn't a lot of energy in that break compared to usual do you think there's a, a factor in the f 
there's a slight change in the draw this time round. So, you know, Tom's a player that, he, for whatever reason, I think he made the decision to travel up yesterday, but then broke down on the way up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said about that. he didn't get here till four o'clock this morning. And normally, as a number one seed, he has to play one match on the Thursday, gets him through to Friday. Mm -hmm. Whereas, because he's a number one seed, he's top half of the draw. The top half all play their last 32s mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, because we're going to be showing every match from the last 32, which is great for us to uh, enjoy. But it means he has to play two matches. So it's a, yeah, whether possibly. that's a factor or not, I don't know. Yeah, because it, even sort of travel arrangements aside, he probably always has it in his head that he just has to just get the win in the first game yeah. and then reset and then sort of, yeah, go at it tomorrow or whenever. But, yeah, possibly. Don't know if this, this red sort of close to the bottom of the table... Um, will go in off the yellow to open the red and I mean it doesn't really help him right now because he has a couple of safe reds he's put a cannon on it, he'll do a good, ang good angle on it he's got a couple of options for going into that cluster but so I think he's looking here at overcutting it so he can create angle to go into that cluster a bit better but I feel like he'd maybe still just miss it to the right hand side. That little cluster of three. Find it here though. Off the bottom. Oh no. Not another one of those. Oh, it stays on the table this time. That felt yeah. like the first frame where he went through it, or the second frame rather. Yeah, the thing is, he's not actually. I feel like the two reds together, the top one does still go bottom right. So if he gets a good enough pot on the one in the top half of the table, he's still got a chance here. But compared to where he was. Yeah, sort of two minutes ago, he didn't really seem to fancy it. Extension, please. He's turning that down anyway. That's a clever shot. Up of the table from Callum and acknowledgement. Yeah, the only ball he can see, he can't do anything with. Yeah, I feel like he's going to try and not move this ball too much. Yeah, just reach the cushion. Yeah, that's it, yeah, but it's pointing down. You just have to view at the one at the top of the table, but he's. He's tied this right up enough that he doesn't really mind. That was the main objective, it was just to keep this one safe down here. I don't think Tom really enjoys these frames where he feels like he's sort of forced to go for something but he doesn't really want to. Which could be a good angle for just nudging these two balls along the bottom here. Yeah, so he's actually looking at spinning two cushions and going into these, just so he can kick the yellow completely away from the red. So bottom cushion and flick the yellow. Like so, that's a very good shot if he's on that. Is he? be able to tell by his yeah I think he can pop this one a lot of people would just sort of lash into them but he he, he worked out really well there don't think he can get very close to this red here he's just got to leave it yeah so he can avoid that yellow yeah, which is going to compromise him getting onto the eight ball as well yeah digging pretty hard here he's just going to try and play a delicate one spin it in and leave the double I'm pretty sure He's a very good, I've sort of jinxed it now, but he's a very good doubler of the balls, Tom. Do well to hold it though. He might be coming across with it, yeah, I guess. Oh, he's played that shot, he's played it really well. Yeah, he held it, it very well. Very easy, that. yeah. That's incredible. Even for how much he was sort of queuing down on it, I felt like he was sort of digging into it to come by the left middle and leave the, the black down the rail. Yeah, you said he's very good at doubles. Oh, he shows us there. Excellent from Tom Cousins. It really was. Things have not really been going 
in full flow in this match. That was an excellent visit to the table. Yeah, it was. It was really well worked out as well. 1 0 to your brother as well, Ryan, who's underway against Josh Kane. That's a good matchup as well. Yes, yeah. He hit them a lot better, but no reward. They seem to really crunch him as well. Nothing really threatened, though, as well, the yellow on the top left, that's it, yeah. Last, yeah, like yeah, I'm shaking his head, it's just. You've usually got a. Of a cut break, you've usually got a few sweats on balls going towards pockets, but you didn't really get much of a sweat there for how good he hit them. And I mean, the reds look fantastic here. Yeah, for the first time, maybe in the match, it feels like a really good layout, one that you expect the player to get. And this is probably what Callum would have wanted. Uh, it's not by design, obviously, he's hit them really well, but by the thing he wants to avoid is Tom getting a really easy layout to get himself going. He would rather there were sort of disjointed frames and he was sort of like staying within one or staying one ahead or whatever and it was sort of the ball was more in his court yeah it's like it looks like a pretty simple plant but it's having a good look at it yeah no mistakes although not the cue ball yeah. does that mean the red doesn't pass uh, the yellow it must do because he, he definitely wouldn't have played that shot though Maybe that's why he was properly analysing the plant because he knew you had to put a bit a bit into it. Because I feel like if he just had to make the plant, he it, it, would have rolled it in fine. If he gets to this, this is a bonus because he could almost just nudge the yellow a little bit as well. He just to turn it over a little bit. He's not happy. What I'm thinking is if the, if the red doesn't, you know, they get it tight to the yellow. Th otherwise, why not just play on that ball? Yeah. Sell that really well. He's still got a lot of options here. If he ends up landing behind that red and potting it playing, then <laughs> I've, I've lost. All, yeah. bet, all bets are off. Yeah. Do you want to screw into it here? I feel like that's a bit. If he hits on the other side of the, the yellow, the white the cue ball will be coming down the way. He needs to kind of hit the yellow field, doesn't he? Or just get into it really well and play it like that. That's just really well controlled. And again, you were talking about his pool brain earlier. Like he, he's, he's seen that if he drops that one really delicately in the middle, he's guaranteed the angle. And he's trying to attack it early so he's not giving himself one shot at it. If he would have missed a cannon air, he would have given himself another shot of it. I think probably it's noticeable, maybe because he's playing so much, maybe because he's winning so much, but he goes into his bad balls quicker than just about anybody in yeah. the game. Like I say, if he would, where that cue ball was just before he potted that last red, if he hadn't have got the cannon and he was where, he would have just potted that ball, came off the bottom cushion and played a little cannon again. He would have, yeah. he was just giving himself options, really. Yes, that's, oh, is he snooking himself this time? That's he has, yeah. wow. He, he sort of knew he was going towards there, but that's still, to, to rest on that is still insane, really. <laughs> came knew straight away ball. as well. Yeah, he did, yeah. You could tell by his reaction. I think he was just the wrong side of it, because he would have just nipped it. I feel like he would have just nipped it up and sort of coming around the angles or something, but I think he felt like he couldn't really do that. There you go. Well did to it. It was close. Ooh. A bit of frustration there, yeah, he's annoyed. You don't see much from Tom, but... Yeah, yeah huge frustration. I was, was going to say that before the last frame, he sort of had his hands on his face, giving himself a, like rubbing his face down a little. Oh no! Well, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. It was though. Yeah, I that was the the perfect steal as well for Callum when Tom was sitting there dejected. That would have been yeah, he's shaking his head. He can't. He's just trying to re reset himself here. Yeah, get him breaking pretty quickly and see if he can get him to break with some frustration and get another chance. I think he's just got to go into the eight ball here and hope that it's, unless he can put it thin, but it's just going to have to, yeah, that's kind of all he can do, and that's kind of unbelievable from what I can imagine. Wow, that's not what you want to see. Yeah. Unbelievable is not the word, that's as good as it could be. Hopefully the cameraman does not go into Callum, he will not be happy. Yeah. You can't really, you know, say, oh, he's had a nudge, because from Callum's perspective, yeah. all he can think about is the miss pot. I know, yeah, and, and, and uh, an apology there from Tom, but that's not what, like you say, that's not what Callum will be annoyed about, it's a... And it sort of feels, this feels, it's got a similar feel to it that he's turned up to this tournament. He was 5-3 down, and then he did four straight from the break against Lewis Roberts to get through first round. Yeah, that was always going in there, wasn't it? Yeah. And you just wonder sometimes, I know it's very early in the tournament, but just things happen for Tom Cousins. 
We're not like successfully here, like though. So it was going in before it got cursed, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a funny match so far. I feel like they've let one another off the hook. Any of them could have been sort of leading by any scoreline. And well, we kept look. closing in on 35 minutes played, and there's been five frames. Yeah. I mean, it shows you it's been a strange match. Two players at this level. This is by an absolute mile the, the most important visit of the match so far, anyway, though, because if Tom was to. If if Callum was to sort of let Tom back in here and Tom came out with six frames at four two up, he'd be over the moon because Callum had the chances pretty much in every frame. Well, he has in every frame, albeit one of the frames was very tactical. Do you know what? For somebody who's very like who's a very mentally strong person, Callum does still look like he's thinking about the errors before. Like he doesn't he doesn't look like he's sort of giving himself a shake. Do you find that can happen though as a player? Sometimes you just go through a few poor results and lose a little bit of confidence and you start yeah, overthinking it. Yeah. I think we, we talked about, obviously we mentioned Scott Gillespie, obviously he looked fantastic in the British Open, but I kind of sense he's been going through a lot of that himself. Yeah, and you're more thinking about things going wrong. Um, but I feel like just within this match, within this sort of or what half an hour period or whatever it's been so far, I feel like the errors, yeah, you can just forget, you're only one frame behind, you can forget about them, but I feel like it's still, I'm still weighing down on them a little bit. Like, I feel like these would have been a, a formality if he hadn't made errors. And again, it looks like he is going to get them, of course, but. Yeah, I mean, but if he can make the clearance here and make it 3 3, he's going to be playing like a 14 minute match against Tom Cousins. Okay, it's a race to what will be four at that point but it's more a case it's just a 14 minute match mm -hmm. and that's not a bad place to be you know when you're going in to a match against the, the number one player yeah you'd have taken him out at the start but even if he if he gets the first chance in the next for him which is his break isn't it yeah it is yeah so if he if he sort of gives himself a good chance of clearance and he leaves sort of say 10 12 minutes on the clock he'll he will have a look at the clock and he will think well suddenly all of a sudden i'm do you know what i mean i'm all, almost favorite from thinking at the start, you have to play your very best stuff to play nowhere near your best stuff and possibly being, you know, a frame up with 10 plus minutes to go, you'd be over the moon. Yeah, absolutely. And he's done what he had to do there and made the clearance. So we are 3 3. There's 14 minutes left in this match. The match clock is going to have a say. It's maybe just a bit frustrated as well. Let's see if Calm can keep this break popping up in here. He's hitting well as well, yeah. The balls went straight in. Gets the, the non-golden break. Yeah. Eight ball come back up, but it's a lovely break and he'll get a good chance. Depends where this is. I'm, I'm pretty sure the eight ball will go tied up with this red, but we'll see in a, when it's respotted. You want that on a Monday night. Doesn't mean anything on a Pro Series weekend. Yeah, I always have that split second of worry <laughs> if someone does, it, someone does it against me. I have to try and analyse what competition it is first yeah yeah it's worth mentioning it is just a competition rule it's not part of international eight ball rules just added in for certain tv tournaments well i think quite rightly not involved in the in the pro series yeah i would say so too I, i've been on both ends of it happening and do you know what i mean it has it's sort of it's it's fun it's novel and stuff like that but it, yeah you would hate to see a an epic hell hell match decided by that yeah. really. I mean, we have seen ones decided li like that on um, in competitions but just didn't, doesn't feel as right in a yeah. in a pro, pro series well, now the eight ball gets respotted, goes back on its own spot and he's made other balls so that therefore it's Callum's chance at the table yeah it's only really the I mean you have to obviously sort the the order a little bit but the yellow that's closest to the break line the one, is the one that's the problem because the one that's on the right hand side goes easily and is the ball to get on the eight ball so he only really needs to figure out the rest of the sort of the top three in the top half of the table yeah I don't think he's really decided here which is obviously not good with the shot shot clock because he's also he's going to have to get a shift on here he's missed that yeah, in the end he ran out of time. Yeah, I almost feel like he didn't decide, like he wasn't really good on anything really. But um, yeah, Tom's not Tom's not coming to the table with a lot to go here either. Yeah, 
has gone six six with Dave McNamara and Cole Bedford. Quick turnaround in that match. Yeah, that was it was six three Cole when you last looked, wasn't it? That was only maybe yeah. ten minutes ago. So also a very good match. Yeah, Cole had a very quick victory. Earlier on today, 7-0 over Ryan Pisani. Yeah, Pisani, I wasn't expecting that one. That's obviously, it, it can happen with the way that Cole can be. He can be explosive and he can just blow someone away. But Ryan's quite similar in that sense, isn't he, really? It's a very good shot there. Scott Gillespie, 3-1 up on Ian Alley. Connor Tracy, 5-4 up on Jimmy Croxton. Very tight game there. Huge frame this one as we're going to tick into the final 10 minutes and 15 seconds a shot. Yeah, it's crazy because I was saying that if someone was to get in and make a finish, they would be leaving 10, 12 minutes, but we're almost coming up to that 10-minute mark now when do you know what I mean? We're not any closer to to solving this puzzle. Well, Tom must have been touching ball there. Yeah. But if he was, it's a slightly poor shot. You'd feel like if he's touching ball, you'd expect him to get a better cue ball than he has. Because he wanted to get rid of the, the ball over the pocket. Yeah, I, th I think the yellow was just thin enough that he, he had to make sure he potted it. Um, he would have obviously just liked to trickle the the red the, the cue line behind that red that he was bridging over there, Colin. But I think he just made sure he didn't give him an easy in. Yeah, this is a massive frame. Could be talking six, seven minutes, some six minutes on the clock or something after this frame, really. Someone one frame ahead. Yeah, all of a sudden it's, yeah, you've got to keep a very keen eye on the match clock here. Because whoever wins this one is probably one chance away from winning, really. Two frames ahead with five minutes left. And the dy 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 dynamics are so different to a Monday night where you've got the golden breaks and things happen so much quicker that it's not quite the same. Yeah, two ahead with five to play, is a, you're not far away from, mm -hmm. from the match being won. I mean, it's still time for a good couple of finishes, but got to get the chances and you've got to take them. I mean, the way this match has gone, I can't, I can't see anybody getting two quick finishes when we had any quick frames. No. <laughs> it's just not been the match I was expecting at all. I don't think either player were expecting a match like this either. If someone said to me that eight frames would get com potentially be completed in uh, any Tom Cousins match, others could help him loads. Oh, that's helped him a lot. Wow, <laughs> this could be the final frame in the match. This could be. Yeah. This could be. The this could be. This could be three. This could be three each. Six red, <laughs> <laughs> which is unbelievable, really. I feel like whenever you ask whoever the victor is in this match to analyse the match, none of them are going to know what, yeah. what to say <laughs> at all. Like really. Well, well I'm going to run out there and interview the winner <laughs> of the match. It'd be really interesting to see what they say. Yeah, you better put it to them. You better yeah. ask them what what was going through their head. <laughs> Even here, this is going to be really tough to, to work out because there is only 15 seconds to think about it. You, you almost need to be sitting in your chair working out what you're going to be doing yeah. without knowing where the cue ball is going to be when you get to the table. You need to be formulating mm -hmm. plans and backup plans and yeah. C plans and all sorts up there. He's almost, yeah, he's, he's just as well just putting another red, a red down there, hasn't he, really? Oh, two seconds left, oh my word. Oh, he's just hit, the, <laughs> just hit it. Yeah, I thought he was going to play, play that shot for a second. He was, yeah. It's actually pretty good, but... Tom might just take that yellow off the table. Yeah. Leave the cue ball on the top cushion. That would be a good shot, in fact. I don't see the point in nestling into these ones down here because the red and the black are tied up brilliantly, really. He might just top into the yellow and put the yellow safe on the cushion, like so. Oh, brilliant. That's good. Right, Carl, double, in off the yellow, open them up, pot cannon on the block. Oh, he's doing it too. <laughs> At least not. See again, he's just uh, because he he doesn't know what, what Tom's going to be playing there, and he only has sort of not even ten seconds to work out where he's going to play, and then five seconds to play it. So the two reds and the eight ball for Tom aren't a problem because he's got the red to to deal with it. So for Tom, it's the yellow on the left, uh, the red on the left hand side that he now needs to get out, and then he's just playing something for the sake of playing something. Yeah. As well, yeah. 
This is fascinating. Doesn't really want to be leaving. Yeah, he's fine now. Yeah, like you say, he doesn't. He just needs this this red that's closest to the cue ball. He needs that red out in play, and then he can do what he wants. I'm not sure about that. Because I feel like that's going to get nudged. Out. No, it's worked out quite well because he can now play maybe a loss of turn if he wants. Yeah. And then he's got the yellow there to cannonate ball. This is mad. I wonder if Tom's eventually just going to go, nope. I'm just not sure he's put that off. <laughs> well, that's made it a little trickier for him to open it up, but it has got a really good snook because he, he might get cue ball in hand to be able to do it. Yeah, if he must get to the side cushion. Yeah. I feel like the, the red goes along the bottom rail, so he would almost have the cannon that he was looking for. He's going to try and go back in and hide it. Oh, just don't put the cue ball over with this. Good luck. Cheers. <laughs> Good luck getting out of this one. Cheers, Tom. Just don't dislodge any of them. That's a great shot. Oh, oh that would wow. Have been unbelievable. Because again, he's still got the same problem to solve. But he could almost put the cue over he wants it. Well, I mean, next shot. I mean, he literally could put the cue over he wants it now. But he can just leave this cue ball in a good position. Next. Do you think he might play this off the reds now and open them all up? I yeah. Think that's got to be the way. So, yeah, they'll go. Oh, that's a good yeah, he couldn't ask for a better result. He's happy. I did think that red was going to tie up with the yellow. And uh, I don't know if he has to play this one now or if he can just go back to it. He's having to play very quickly, though. I don't think this frame's done yet. He's going to screw the back a little and I can avoid it. Yeah, this frame's done. The problem for Callum here is, like I said, whoever wins this frame is one chance away. And it is Tom's break, so... He would be, he's just, he's disgusted with himself there. He's trying to stop all and screwed. But yeah, a foot back. So it's a delicate one. Yeah, it's fine. It's just his own high standards well. Bugging him there. Well, the frame that we thought would be solved by the 10, 12 minute mark is taking an extra. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's the second 10 minute plus frame of the match. It's quite incredible. Oh, Tom is absolutely flushed up, Rick. <laughs> that is not good for for Callum, who's just hoping for a and maybe another unlucky and off. If they show you again, he has flushed it right down the middle. It's maybe not as easy as it sort of you would have hoped to how good he hit the break, but just wondering if he takes yellow off red, does it does that do all the work in the first shot? From the main camera it looked okay, but from the it's, it's not as easy as shot. Yeah, it does yeah. look like he would have to catch it quite thin. I mean, he's playing it all. Yeah, you're right. It, it did as soon as you changed the camera angle it looked fine, didn't it? Yes, he just doesn't mind his work here because, like you say, without a golden break in play, if he finishes these and leaves three minutes on the clock, Carl will need to get skates on. Can't wait to see how Tom analyses this game. Yeah, I'm just wondering what he's going to say. I mean, he's not won the match yet, but yeah, like four say, balls yeah. away from being two in front with three, well, two and a half minutes to play. It's a strong place, isn't it? Still a couple of shots to be played here, though. He's not landed very good on this. Yeah, he's chosen to come back for this one, though, has he? Yeah. That was the right choice, I think. Because he was always going to be on the wrong side of that yellow at the top. Managed to eke even more out of this frame time wise than I thought as well. It's two and a half minutes by the time he gets his away. He 
He's letting every second trickle away. Yeah. And so he should, the way yeah, this match is yeah, going. He absolutely should, but you don't see him do it too often. No. He really has been there. He's watching the, the clock and right the way down to the wire on a few shots. Well, this needs a ball. Yeah, this needs to be rapid. One minute break clearance he's is required. And he's got a layout on the yellow as well. Oh, let's go then. A beautiful split. One to the right centre, up for the stickier one next. The two that are together. Oh, he's put it for a pace here. I feel like the, yeah, he's got a run about, isn't he, really? Is this a plan? No. Yeah, he's just struggling now, isn't he? Yeah, he's trying to find something. Just time-wise with the cue yeah. ball running about. Do you know what I mean? He's just blocked the double on the eight ball, so you'll now have to land on it down the line if he gets a chance. I just wondered whether he could... He was on the yellow to left centre straight away. If he drops it in, he's got top right. I didn't... Yeah, which true. is the yeah. right hand of the two together. I felt like the only reason he was taking that right. Oh, I might not have done a plan now. I feel like the only reason he took the. I, I thought he was taking the right centre is he could have went up and landed on either of these two yellows in the left centre. But oh, that's a great pot, and he's on this. But he's one off to hope for. I mean, the uh, biggest dry break from Tom ever. Tom, yeah. Tom's almost just gonna. Stun the puck. <laughs> a 50 second, a 45 second yeah. reverse clearance isn't unheard of. It's it's, it's rare, it's but it's going yeah, here, yeah. So even here, like this is, it's going to leave a tough. But oh, might not even. This is quite tough. I'm not even playing this beside. I'm just dropping it in dead weight. Oh, I thought I felt like that was coming, you know, because he had to load up beside. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, said he's had no. enough. It's a frustrating match for both, but yeah. it is the number one player that gets over the line. Strange one, uh, Mark, but yeah. job done for Tom Cousins. He marches on. He's into the last 16. Fascinating to hear what he's got to say about that one.